All right, so problem number three uh, for the final exam. Um, I, I think I am going to go ahead and kind of tell you it, it will be rotation. It will be either gears, pulleys, the two things that are connected by a belt, you know, one inside of the other. Uh, so it will be this type of problem. Um, and it might, this one is not constant. It might be constant acceleration or it might be one like this one where it's not constant acceleration. Uh, so make sure you know all those derivatives and integrals, or you don't have to know them, they're on your formula sheet, but know when to use them or when you can use constant acceleration equations. So <clears throat> here we go, starting from rest, gear A yeah, rotates with an angular acceleration of 0.2t. After 10 seconds, calculate uh, everything that's happening at H. So <clears throat> I've got a few, okay, options here. Now, I could do all my math at A, you know, I could um, go ahead and find the acceleration of A, jump that answer to H. I could find the vo angular velocity of A, jump that to the linear velocity of H. I could find the theta of um, A and kind of jump that to my um, change in height of H. Um, or I can take this uh, point to T and just go ahead and jump that to the acceleration of H and I could do my math down here. I could do some linear uh, stuff down here at H to find the uh, velocity, the height, things like that. And so that's actually what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to take this point to T and I'm going to jump from A to B. I'm going to go from outer to inner, but we'll see that there really is no jumping from outer to inner. The angular stuff for the outer, angular acceleration, which is what this is, angular velocity, angular displacement, for outer is going to be the same as inner. Then I'm going to jump from inner to H right here. <coughs> All right, so let's see how this goes. All right, let's take um, alpha and jump from A to B. How do I jump from one gear to another gear that are touching? Well, the linear information uh, on the edge of gear A is the same as the linear information on the edge of gear B. So whether it's R theta, R, A, R, theta, R theta of A equals R theta of B or R omega equals R omega or R alpha equals R alpha, right? A, 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 A. B, 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 B. Um, so anyway, that's what we're doing. We're going to say R, A, alpha, A equals R, B, alpha, B. So 50 times 0.2T equals 200 alpha, B. So alpha, B is going to be 0.05T. This is outer. This is also inner. Don't try to... Um, <clears throat> convert any angular information from outer to inner. The, you know, one rigid body can only have one angular acceleration, and this is really one rigid body, right? This whole thing is a solid rigid body. It's going with only one angular um, acceleration, okay? Now, let me jump from here to H. How can I jump from here to H? Well, the acceleration of H is the acceleration on the edge right here, the tangential acceleration on the edge. And so this would be equal to R alpha. This would be 100 millimeters. Let me think about my units here. 100 millimeters times 0.05T. 5T uh, in millimeters per second squared. All right, so the acceleration of H is 5T millimeters per second squared. I wish it had told me that to begin with. Instead of telling me that A is rotating with an angular acceleration, uh, why don't it just tell me, hey, H is going with a linear acceleration of 5T. Now, it's actually super simple. This may be too simple um, than I would put on a final exam, but the process of taking some information, jumping it to the point where you want, and now I'm going to do all my equations right here. I'm not going to use 
constant acceleration equations, that uh, 5t is not constant, um, I'm going to use um, derivatives and integrals. Okay, if I'm given acceleration, okay, yeah, let's don't overthink this one right here. If I'm given acceleration and asked for acceleration, do I need to do a derivative or an integral or nothing? You know, I'm given acceleration is 5t, and so when t is 10, uh, 50 millimeters per second squared is the acceleration of h after 10 seconds. Okay, all right, so for that one, I did not do a derivative or an integral, I just plugged in. Uh, all right, but b, if I want velocity, all right, I'm given an equation for acceleration. And first of all, I'm not just going to use that. This is not the constant 50, an acceleration of 50. This is the final acceleration after 10 seconds. <coughs> the acceleration of h is really 5t. Okay, so if I'm given an equation for acceleration, I ask to find velocity. Think about, you know, position, velocity, acceleration. If I'm going from position to velocity to acceleration, that's a derivative. But from acceleration to velocity, that's an integral. Acceleration to velocity, that's an integral. Uh, which integral? Uh, the integral dv equals integral a dt. So the integral of 5t dt. All right, this one is v minus v initial. Don't forget about that v initial, although this one started from rest. Um, either you got to have this v initial right here, or you've got this, got to have this constant of integration. Um, I do these as definite integrals, so I have the initial right here, but it was zero. All right, that equals, let's see, t squared over two, five t squared over two. Five t squared over two, let's say 2.5, 2.5 t squared. And then I'm interested when t is equal to 10, um, I've got 250, 250 millimeters per second is the velocity of h after 10 seconds. All right, so what, what did I do? I took that integral <clears throat> to find velocity, and then I plugged in 10. All right, now I've got the change in height, right? The distance, right? I know velocity. Here's my equation for velocity that works anytime 2.5 t squared, right? That's my equation for velocity that works anytime. And if I want position, I've got to take an integral again. Integral ds equals integral v dt. So the integral of 2.5 t squared <coughs> dt. This is s final minus s initial, which is the change in height. Or you can think of this as zero. Or just think of this as delta h. <coughs> change in height. Uh, let's see. t cubed over 3 t cubed over 3. <clears throat> so, and if I'm interested when t is equal to 10, my change in height, <clears throat> 833 millimeters. 833 millimeters is the change in height. So let's step back and look at what we did. I decided, based on what I was given, I was given some information about A, but I'm asked all this information about H, I decided, okay, I'm going to want to do all my math at H. So I just take all the information and jump it to H, which was really only this 0.2t. I took 0.2t and I jumped it right here to the acceleration of H is 5t. And then I, it was just a 1d stuff we were doing the first day of class, right? Um, <clears throat> if you're given an equation for acceleration and asked to find velocity, you take an integral. Be careful here with, con with um, initial velocities. Um, if you want to find position, you take an integral again. Um, so we did that right there. It wasn't too bad, was it?